Hello again. Um, I think the last video I did was of that um, country cottage scene and uh, or country village scene, which was uh, very popular. But now I'm going to do a shortened version of it. So we just have a few, just a few characters, or a, a, a few objects in our in our scene, <clears throat> and. Hopefully it'll simplify things a little bit. I'll be using the same colours again. But because I've not got them on screen, I'll shout them out to you as I uh, go along. First of all, I'm going to just wet the, the um, sky area. And I'm covering the church as well, because the church is going to be in the distance. So wet that area. A little bit of um, purple, violet, with a little bit of ultramarine. Let's just try a bit of that first. Very nice. Now we'll have a bit of French ultramarine there. Yeah, there you go. Don't want to do any more to that. I'm just leaving that to paint itself. So come back in about 30 seconds. I gave it a little shake around and just leaving it now like that. So while that's drying out, I'm going to put a couple of faint trees in the background. And I'm taking the opportunity while it's still wet to, to do that. So I'm going to use a few the same colours as we used with the sky. But now with a little bit of Payne's Grey, which we did on that last video. So I've just watered that down a bit. And I'm just cutting in to around the, um, the house. And as this sky dries, I'm hoping that this... Payne's grey will pull itself apart from the rest of the sky. If it doesn't, we'll make it up as we go along, eh? So I just put a few distant trees around this area here. There you go. And bring that down into the back here. And I think we'll um, add a little bit of green. So I'm using my um, my sap green just for the top part here. I'm keeping it a soft edge. Keep it a soft edge here. And now a little bit of green gold. I like green gold, it is a lovely colour. I'm just going to add a little bit to that edge. Being careful to shape, it's like in a negative way, I'm shaping these buildings. Down there, like right that. And we'll just pull this down. And there's a little triangle here. That's going to be a chicken. So it's going to be a white chicken. So I'm going to just paint around him. Just there. And because these trees are toward the bottom of our scene. I'm going to use a bit of this. Same mixture I used for these trees at the back. Just at the bottom. Just to make it a little darker. <laughs> Now, this colour at the bottom, just going to go along there. There's another little triangle there. Here's a little chicken. He's having his dinner. And we'll go all the way along there. Another chicken. There you go. Popping up everywhere, these chickens, aren't they? 
There we go, down there. Around my chicken. There you go. Well, that is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, really? Because we just did the sky, we put a different shade of colour for the trees. And coming down while it's still wet, we just did put some more uh, uh, a couple of greens in and we have to check on that colour green it's the same green that I used last time I think it was Viridia or something like that anyway there's the green let's let's let that dry for a minute hello and welcome back I've just checked and the green that I used for that is sap green so sap green and gold green they're my two colours of green in my palette these little things at the back have dried, which is lovely. That means I'm going to use a bit of my colour, same colour I used for these, on my church steeple. Okay. And what I love about letting the sky paint itself you get little things in there where that you probably couldn't even imagine doing yourself it's like God takes over and he says no 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 I'm going to put a little shaft of light on there and you think ok then Lord That's, then you want me to pay that I will do Oh, that is a, a nice church there in the distance. Now, in order to create an illusion of mist, I'm going to stop painting there, get some clean water, give it a little rinse there, a little dry out, and tap into it and bring it down. Bring that down there. You're just dragging it down and then push that back up there and let those two things affect each other now just putting a bit of this water on there and I'm going to just just tap a little bit of colour into that only a tad of it now we're going to go over the top of these trees areas with some bits of leaves and there we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is just soften those edges at the bottom by running across it with a damp brush there you go we'll leave that bit until it dries and in the meantime we'll have a go at these to do these I'm going to use a we'll start off the colour with a mix I'm just cleaning my palette really with I've had all my warm colours in this certain area and I'm now going to add a bit of yellow rose opera and we've got my uh, a mixture of burnt sienna on there so just on this part here and we'll just um, add a bit of burnt sienna down there now I'm going to change that colour up a little bit by adding a bit of rose opera So I'm making it warmer as it comes down. Warmer and pinker. And these colours seem to come because they contrast these green trees really well. There we go. And a bit more. 
just at the bottom. There we are. Well, let that bit dry. It's, it's a nice, interesting colour. I think what we'll do, we will put a bit of rose opera on the top of this chimney pot here, on this chimney stack. I should say, get it right, Mike. And there we go. Now we'll go along with the same mixture. Along here. And we're joining that up there. So it's a good idea to try and join your shapes. It helps when the eye is flowing, flowing around your painting. So we'll go down there with that. Now we'll add a bit of that upper rose to our mixture and bring it down. Ever so pretty. And I think what I'll do is I'll make me brush this there, lift some of that colour off there and off there. So I'm borrowing this colour and colour now and paint it back up there. We borrowed it and we paid it back. Now the the light. I want the light to come down this angle, but the light seems to be shining from there from these the two little things here. So I've got to obey nature, and I'm gonna put a casting shadow down this side. That's going to be better. If you let nature dictate the picture, then there you go. Cracked it. Now, that's, as that's dry, let's go back to the screen, the sap green. I'm using sap green and I'm adding a little bit of opera rose, yes. And let's just go underneath here. Boom, boom, boom. He's uh, the darker the shadow, the sunnier it gets, I think. And that also uh, is the same way it's about the sharpness of the shadow as well. If you soften that shadow up, you'll find that it's not such a sunny day. See these shadows are nice and sharp here. Uh, that's I think I think that's what we want from this picture. A nice sunny day. That's why we've got these strong shadows here. And we'll go along this side as well. Nice and simple. How easy can it be to paint a tree? It's just two colours, isn't it? Two shapes. And that is so easy. And when it dries, I might get another little shadow at the bottom there. But I think we should let that dry for a minute. In fact, while that is drying, I think we can pay a little bit more attention to these trees. So. I'm still using the same brush. Not showing off or anything, but <laughs> uh, the same colours, uh, paint grey, with some of these sky colours. I just mix uh, another fresh. I've got to be careful when I put my hand now because it's 
going to be wet in lots of places so I'm going to water on that brush because it's a little bit and put my finger there I'm putting these branches in and there are certain places where you can you can make your branches disappear halfway down so we'll do that I'm just gonna lift out a couple of areas there just by putting my brush there and you can even do it with your handkerchief just just lift out there that shows us like a faint area of of branches now this church at the back I want to give it a little bit of form so I'm making a really fine mixture of that so I'm gonna we know that the light is coming from this angle it's so just catching over there so we're gonna put a little bit of a shadow at this side and drag that down there a little bit now with my damp brush just soften that at the bottom. Soften it there. Make it on. I think we'll put a little clock in there or a bit of a something going on there anyway. I'll let the view decide what's going on there. So while that's working there, we'll just Remove a few branches there. I'll have a couple over that part here. That seems to work, doesn't it? A bit dark over there, so I'll just lift some of those off. That's it. Right. Now that's taking shape. We can now concentrate on getting some shadows in here. Now my favourite colour for shadows is purple. A mixture of purple and opera rose. Purple, opera rose and a little bit of ultramarine blue as well. Right here. I think what we should do though now is dry that so I'm going to get my airbrush on it I don't like doing my hair dry but I will okay welcome back we are now going to put some shadows in this first of all I want to put a mixture of blue and green a bit more blue there just on the front of these pit houses now that's a bit too rich that so just Get a bit of water and just pull that away. Just dull that down. And it's I'm going to call this shadow one. It's just shows that these pit, these buildings are a little bit uh, they're pale colour. Let's have a let's have a look if we put a bit of yellow in there. Don't know how that will look, but we'll give it a try. I'm just going to throw it around there a bit and over there just to change the colour there. So that's a white building, and that's like got a, a yellowy 
stony colour building. These are going to be little bushes at the bottom there. Right, so now what we can do is have a look at these shadows here. So we can have nice dark chimney pots, their chimney stacks, their chimney pots. So we'll just add a little bit of warmth to this now. Down there, look at that. Whoa! That's a shadow in it. I'm letting that run down a little bit. I'm going to work that into its charm. Okay. Work it into its charm. Sometimes little accidents are happy accidents as old Bob Ross used to say. And let's get some darker areas into here. Making a lovely shape, that isn't it? A lovely um, blend into there. Just making sure we've got enough pigment in there for when it dries out. We should fix that right the way down if we want to. In fact, we will. Right, now let's get a bit of extra darker colour in here. Using my uh, purple again. A mix of purple, uh, French ultramarine and opera rose. There we go. It's starting to tell the story now. do is wait until that bit dries. Have to be very patient. In the meantime I'm just going to put some shadows here. These little chickens there. And these chickens are going to have lovely red rooster things there. We'll put that there. I all of them for pet the food. Not put too much detail in. So I like the way that was drying, but you know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit more, a bit more to that. So that pigment, and I think it just wants it. As does this. It's kind of It'll thank for me for it later when it dries. So I'm just going to soften that paint there. That's it. Nice, rich pickles. So while that's drying, we'll pause a minute. Hey, welcome back. So we're, both, we're uh, pretty much on the final furlong of this painting. So. So staying with the same brush, I'm going to put some windows in to this uh, building. So, a couple of windows there, and we have a, a three window mullion one there, and just one there. Just one there, one, two there. One, two, one there, and we'll have a door here, a 
Okay, now a bit of a brick wall there. Now this part here, I think, oh, let's get a little, window, a little door in there as well. I think what we're going to do now is we'll create a lovely contrasting brush here which will be cadmium yellow and it's going to just pop in the middle of this scene here now I'm going to lift some of it out and it's going to make it brighter and make it a little bit brighter by lifting it strains out isn't it you'd think it would make it brighter by putting more in but with watercolour it's different it's to get that colour shining through the colour of the paper shining through there we go now yellow is shadowed with orange now you should never try and put a dark colour under there like uh, paints grey or whatever or even these uh, neutral tints under yellow it should always be an orange colour it just seems to work a lot better now a little bit of under there and I'm going to say that's finished so I hope you enjoyed watching that and it's a simpler version of the last one that we did but it's great it's a great one to practice on to, to start building up to bigger and bigger um, landscape paintings like this thanks for watching goodbye